those of us in the environmental field, especially the nonprofit sector, are always trying to do more with less. Plant more trees, restore more wetlands, conserve more habitat. But it's a challenge to know where to work when there is literally a world of opportunity in front of us. Over the last 50 years, with the advent of satellites and GIS, new technologies have provided increasingly advanced ways to model the environment. These tools are continuing to provide us with an unprecedented understanding of how the natural world works. As our knowledge of the landscape has increased, new branches of science have emerged that do everything from tracking how water moves across the landscape to identifying how much carbon forests are sequestering to deciphering how land management decisions might impact historic view shifts. But as with all models, they have limitations. They can do a great job at identifying general areas that are a priority, but they often lack the detail needed to evaluate the benefits of specific projects. There is a disconnect between the scale at which we are planning and the scale we were working. This led to a system where we measure success based on how much work we did, not how good that work was. Funding programs focused on finding the biggest projects, not the best ones. The thinking was that if we did enough, the averages would work out and we'd beat our environmental goals. Now in some industries, quantity over quality is okay, but in our world, that isn't gonna cut it. Not when our climate is about to cross an irreversible threshold and species collapse is creeping ever closer. We had to figure out a way to shift the system to incentivize performance, not just effort. So we looked to underutilize data sets and technologies like high resolution imagery, lidar elevation data, and large scale computing. These tools have been used for years in the academic and private sectors, but they've not made a significant jump to the nonprofit world. Access to these technologies are still out of reach for the vast majority of environmental organizations, where many partners are lucky to have a dedicated GIS analyst, let alone having a workstation capable of processing terabytes of imagery. But that is starting to change. We see how processing data in the cloud makes it feasible to grind through data analysis tasks that have prevented us from using high resolution information to model entire landscapes. This unlocked the concept of precision conservation getting the right practices at the right scale in the right places. And by shifting our models from a 30 meter to a one meter resolution, not only did we now have 900 times as much information to work with, we could see both the forest and the trees. We could tell our partners exactly where in the landscape to work with a higher degree of precision and accuracy. We're working with the academic community to transform research into practice and like rethinking how we map hydrography. And we're not only creating a more accurate map of where water flows, we've transformed that information from stream center lines to a multidimensional product. Access to this information is leading to a renaissance of modeling as traditional limitations are no longer an issue. In the Chesapeake Bay, one of the largest and longest running restoration efforts in the United States, these new data sets are the basis for all future modeling efforts. Scientists and practitioners alike are rethinking how they can clean up entire watersheds. We're seeing new strategies like restoring impaired streams based on a coordinated and strategic approach and pay for performance models that reward high performing projects, not just big ones. But it's not just about having better data. We need to share our understanding of how this new information can help solve real world challenges. We need easy to use tools that make GIS accessible to conservation and restoration partners of all sizes if we wanna make a difference. Luckily, as we've seen increases in the availability of better data, We've seen a similar jump in web and mobile-based geospatial solutions. Whether at your desktop, in a coffee shop, or standing in a farm field, we now have access to astounding data and analysis capabilities. We can work in real time tweaking the footprint of a project to understand how small changes in design can have an outsized impact on performance. We can collect data in the field and immediately have it accessible across our organization. And most importantly, we can share our information. Breaking down the silos in which we all too often work allows us to access our collective knowledge and address big challenges. Let's face it, the issues we are tackling are larger than any one organization can handle, but creating a robust and coordinated approach allows everyone to pitch in. At the Center for Geospatial Solutions, we know what technology and collaboration can do, and we are focused on working with partners across the environmental sector to make sure they are asking the right questions, have the right data to answer them, and are building the partnerships they need to be successful. We need to get people to start thinking geospatially if we're going to tackle global challenges that are inherently spatial. We need to move beyond asking what questions can I solve using the information I have on hand to what is the appropriate data I need to answer the questions I have. I am confident that we are up to the challenge, but it's going to take a concerted effort to bring partners together and identify opportunities for collaboration that leverage all of our strengths. But if we do, I'm confident that amazing things are going to happen.